Welcome back to The Painting Coach, and in this video, we're painting Teclis. Now, just Teclis on his own, we're not painting Selenar, we're going to paint that magnificent beast uh, next time. So strap in, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, hit the bell, so you get all notifications for all my latest content. But we'll be painting Teclis after this. The Teclis is a fairly big dude. So if I uh, take this Primaris Space Marine, put him next to him, look at that, he is quite of the size. Uh, and I guess uh, Games Workshop have hinted why he is a living god after all. So let's uh, get going. So I've primed him with Wraithbone. And the first thing I'm going to do is going to paint the uh, inside of this cloak with some Ashabdi Bone. So We've gone with Wraithbone because it's a nice light colour uh, and it'll help us get through uh, some of the brighter colours a bit easier. Priming, priming this guy black is going to mean a lot of effort to try and get everything up to these kind of bright colours and it'll look quite uh, desaturated and uh, not necessarily dull but it is going to be a lot of effort and a lot of layers whereas going with the brighter layers first it's, uh, it's a little bit easier so in terms of what we're painting this shafty bone we've got the inside of the cloak and we've got the I want to call it a crown but it's not a crown but we've got the the crescent sort of shaped thing here so just be careful not to put that on too thick because there's some nice indentations on there that we're going to colour later on so I'll get all that done. If you need to add a second coat, you can, but in general, it should be fine. And we'll come back and pop a little bit of shading on it next. When that Ushabdi bone is dry, we're just going to give it a little shade with some uh, skeleton horde. And we're looking to paint this directly into the recesses. So we're not covering everything, we're just painting it into the recesses. So I put it on my palette. I'm just going to work it in there with the tip of the brush so you may have to get funky in terms of how you hold uh, the miniature you can see what I've done is I've just attached that to a little bit of plastic sprue with some uh, super glue so it'll snap off easily enough and then I've just pushed it really deep into the putty to kind of hold the model for me so when you're adding this scout and hold you don't want too much because you don't want to be too dark so just take your time working it into those recesses and if you need to then give it a, a little bit more you can but in general we just want you know that nice kind of darkening of the color we don't want it to be too stark so working around all the shabby bone uh, of the cloak doing this and we're going to do the, the kind of the moon crown slightly differently which i'll show you next for the uh, moon crown, we want to use something a little more uh, yellow in colour than the skeleton horde. So I'm going to use seraphim sepia. I'm just going to brush this all around, make sure it gets into all the. I was going to say the artwork. That's probably not the right word. Um, all the etchings, the engravings there, as well as around the whole thing. Make sure it doesn't pool too much like it did there. So just move it away with the brush. And do the other side then once that that's all dry um on the cloak for example you just go back in and tidy up with a little bit of uh the shabdi bone but the seraphine seep on here let that dry um, and we'll use that as the base we'll just highlight up from there to start to highlight this bone we're going to go back to wraith bone we're just going to where we can just pull that along the shape of the plastic now one a good tip from one of my viewers is that keep a damp clean brush close by so if you do make a mistake you can quickly wipe it off but all we're looking to do is catch the edges and then where we've got some design we just want to be really careful just use the tip of the brush to highlight some of that now for the cloak itself, again we just want to, where we can, just draw down using the tip of the brush. Make sure you've got this race bone thinned a little, just 
just like that because don't forget this is kind of going into those shadowed areas don't need a huge amount of uh, highlighting on the cloak and then where you can just use that sharp modeled edge to pop that highlight in there so work your way around put as much or as little highlight on as you want and then that's kind of the cloak done for now and we'll make a start on some of the blue garments next so we've got the cream coming together quite nicely now so I'm going to do something a little different to how I normally do uh, the blue because there's so much blue on Techless and lots of different blues it perhaps makes sense to paint them in colour as they kind of turn up on the model so we're going to paint the back of the cloak and we're going to use Cantor Blue for this now this is going to be one of those colours that actually you're going to need two coats of because going over a light colour Cantor Blue doesn't cover uh, fantastically well much better over black so we're going to pop it on over the black and this is the only real dark blue part that we're going to do so we'll get a nice smooth coat on this and again we may need two if we do there's no biggie it's a nice big centerpiece model so we want to we want to take our time in it so get those two coats of canto blue on and then when we come back we'll have a little look at it and Possibly give it a bit of a shade, but we might just go straight to highlight and we'll see So we probably do want to put a little bit of a shade on uh, the cloak just to separate things up So I'm just going to use some Nuln Oil I'm just going to I'm not going to be too careful with it But you can always go back in and uh, Pick out some of these uh, sharper edges with some Canto Blue, which I'll probably do off cam just to make sure that I've got a nice kind of transition effect rather than a just blocks of darkness which nobody likes blocks of darkness um, so yeah just work your way around with this null oil nice and simple let that dry so go back in with the uh, canto blue and pick up any any bits to just give a nice blend and then we'll come back and start highlighting let me start highlighting the the blue and the color we're going to use for this is uh, alatoc blue in terms of what we're looking to do, we're just looking to use the tip of the brush. Just get a nice smooth highlight. Working our way down those kind of raised edges. Nice and easy, nice and straightforward. Just gives a nice little bit of detail on there so work your way around all those folds get those highlighted and we'll just pop a little sharp one on there next as we're starting to pick up some pace now doing all the blue uh, we just want to give the sharpest edges a little bit extra with hoeth blue just like that so again take your time or if you make any mistakes you can just go back over it with the the other color blues underneath but essentially what you're looking to do with the hoeth blue is just draw the kind of narrower line inside the alatoc blue that you put down first off so work your way around all the blue put as much or as little as you like on and then we'll come back and we'll get to work on all the rest of the blue now that the cloak is finished, let's base up uh, some of the other blue elements. So take some Calidor Sky and the, we're going to base up the plume. And again, similar to the Canto Blue with this Calidor Sky, it may be that you need to pop two coats on just to get the coverage over a, over a light undercoat. And then the other areas we've got to do with this Calidor Sky, we've got all the, well, we've got this ribbon here. So just make sure you get all that done and uh, we've also got all the little tassels as well so um, there's quite a lot of tassels um, most notably here on the kind of bottom of the cloak so just get them all painted as well and then we'll come back and we'll uh, highlight this all up next model is starting to take shape now so let's get some highlights on this blue 
Now the first one is going to be named after the model, or it's already named after the model, but it's the colour we're going to use, and that's Teclis Blue. So where we've got this ribbon, we just want to run it across the top. And then where we've got these little notches coming down, we're going to pop it in there to kind of highlight. And just pull it back in there like that, so you get a nice, nice transition. So that's all kind of like the ribbons. Now when it comes to the uh, all the tassels, now essentially they're going to be exactly the same. But you're just looking for the uh, the most raised bits. Let's just pull down through there, and the hair is the same as well. So just a little difficult to kind of hold this and show you on camera but essentially what we're looking for is looking for those edges so we can highlight the hair uh, all the way back now once that's done we want to take some lothan blue we kind of want to do this very similar but we want to drop this into those uh, those gaps so if we look along here kind of again we're going over that but we just want to emphasize uh, the techless blue on there you can see that that uh, blue is a lot lighter there so just work your way around the model just uh, working up all these highlights and bringing that blue uh, a little bro uh, can't speak a little brighter similarly on the tassels we're doing the same thing so we're looking for those bits we've highlighted and we're just looking to create a little bit of uh, accentuation, same on the hair. With all this uh, blue starting to come together, we want to paint Teclis's, I want to call it a bodysuit. Um, I'm going to use Lothern Blue for this. And again, this is the old, uh, might need two coats for this one. Just take your time, work your way, and be really careful with some of these areas, like these rooms and things, because if we can avoid painting them, then that's all the better. I can see the camera is still struggling with how uh, bright some of these uh, bone areas are, but get the whole suit covered. You may need two or three thin coats, and then we'll come back and highlight it all up. Once we've got that done, we want to Put the next layer on and we want to use a 50 50 mix of blue horror and lothern blue uh, so what you want to do this is you want to paint this over most of the the suit so you're only really leaving that lothern blue right in the kind of the recesses now if you make a mistake at this point it's really easy to fix because you're just going to go in and pop some lothern blue in the recess so work your way around the suit Pop this lighter colour all over and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at uh, highlighting it to give it that kind of really nice light blue look that you can see on the on the box art. So like I said, nice and easy, nice and straightforward, 50-50 mix um, and just work your way around. If you need to pop a, a second coat in just to make sure that it covers properly, as ever, feel free. We'll have a look at uh, the next stage after this is done. Should have a nice light blue coming together now. So the last step we're going to do on uh, the body side is to take some blue horror. And we're going to use this to just highlight those sharpest edges where the fold's coming forward. You can see there that's giving a really nice splendid effect. Uh, because we've not gone for any kind of harsh transitions or harsh colours. It actually works really nice to just highlight those folds where we can. So what we're going to do is work our way all the way around the model, highlighting these folds. Then when we come back, that's most of the blue, if not all the blue done. We'll have a few more uh, little bits and pieces, but I think we'll... Uh, We'll jump onto some of the metallics next. Before we start the metallics, it did occur to me that actually 
because there's two different colour goals on there, um, it would be quicker and more efficient to do it this way around. So what we want to do is we want to cover all these rooms and all the bits of armour with some pallid witch flesh. Now, hopefully, uh, we've been careful enough, so this isn't going to take us too long. We just want to colour in and cover over any issues that we uh, may have created beforehand. So we're looking to just paint inside all the kind of intricate design work. You can see there I've been a little bit overzealous with my uh, application of the blue. So I'm just going to work the pallid witch flesh over it slowly and carefully. And I might need to pop in and give that a little bit of a cover up. So this is nice and, nice and simple steps. So work your way around, get it all done. And we'll come back and I'll, what I'll do is I'll start to lay the, the base for gold next. Okay. So, for the different goals, um, we're going to base everything, um, and we're also going to base all the kind of the leather bits, like the shoes, with um, Rhinox hide. So, again, this is a proper time taker, because you've got to be careful when you come to those areas you've already finished. And again, you may also have to give it two coats, because if you're thinning your paint uh, a little then going over a light surface uh, it might take you more than the one coat now for basing the gold this is uh, where you need to turn on your, your patience a little bit because what we're looking to do is we're looking to base all the gold with Rhinox hide now let's look at what this means in reality so for the lighter gold which is all the kind of little bits of armor what we want to look at doing is just painting rhinox hide along the raised areas like that so make sure that it's suitably thin just making sure that you can see what i'm doing on the on the camera if you make any mistakes like i have there you can just go back in and uh pop some pallid witch flesh over it so this is really intricate bits of armor now if you've seen my other lumineth video which i'm sure will be linked to at some point uh in this video as well i should do exactly the same thing because it just makes that um working that bit of gold armor the lighter gold so much easier and we're also going to paint all the kind of the leather bits as well so just if you're not sure which bits they are just have a look at the box art and again take your time so i kind of made a bit of a mistake in there so i'm going to clean my brush off i'm going to let that dry i'm not going to go stabbing at it with a wet brush but i'm going to let it dry and then we'll come back so you've got to work your way around all the armor getting those bits done and all the leather as well i know it's time consuming but it is worth it for the effect you get now that's the kind of job that takes a little bit of time but it is uh, absolutely worth it uh, for the next few stages so what we want to do then is we want to take um, some Retributor armor and put this on the gold areas uh, that are going to, be, going to be a darker gold. So things like the the sword scabbard design on there. We've also got the sword itself. So again, just be careful not to get that over uh, bits you've already finished. And we've got this design along here, and then we've got this here as well so get that painted we'll shade it next the, the reason I'm not doing the other gold parts yet sort of all the brown bits is because we're going to use liberator gold for that but what I want to make sure we do is we highlight up everything first um, shade it and then we'll use liberator to highlight this gold the darker gold and obviously go in as the lighter gold as well well that uh darker gold base done where we're getting somewhere so I'm gonna give that a little shade with some right and flesh shade and make sure it doesn't pull in the recesses but essentially what we're looking to do is just paint all that gold with the right and flesh shade being careful not to go over anything we've already finished so again you know you don't need to watch me doing too much of this it's fairly straightforward 
to highlight the gold and to do all the gold trim on the armor uh, we're going to use some liberator gold now where possible we just want to use this along the edge of the gold itself so it's a nice easy highlight for you to make and again you're just working your way around everything that you've kind of already finished so you know take your time this is that kind of point of the model where it can potentially be a little frustrating because you've worked hard on it to this point but you're not really getting anywhere and that's fine don't worry about it so much because uh, we're not too far from the, the home stretch now so work your way all the way around uh, kind of catching those highlights where you can and then when it comes to the armor essentially we're going to do exactly the same thing and we're looking to catch the edges of those parts that we've done in Rhinox Hide and you can see then that you're starting to get that really nice uh, bright gold but you've still got a little bit of shadow underneath it so it looks nice and effective as ever take your time on this part you can always go and repair any mistakes you make but the more time you take the less having to go back you'll do so work your way all the way around the model get that done and then we've got a few bits and pieces to do so we've got some more metallics to do we've got the leathers the face we're pretty much there with techless techless is really uh taking a bit of shape now albeit a little bit uh longer than perhaps i anticipated and a little bit more uh, messing about the next thing we're going to do in here we're just going to finish off the, the rune this piece just being real careful just to kind of catch those top edges so I'm just going to tidy that up off cam and then we'll highlight it next to highlight that rune we'll just take a little bit of techless blue and we're just looking to catch the kind of top edges of it. Always being really careful not to spill it. Next up, let's get the silver metallics underway. So we're going to base these with iron hand steel. And we've got the sword. And we've also got the a little bit of, I guess, chainmail scale armour underneath here as well. So, as ever, just be really careful when you come to those areas you've already finished. And then we'll shade it next. We'll shade all of this with a, a drop of null oil. Now, we don't want too much, um, but we just want to work it in there and run it over those scales, nice and simple. And of course up and down the blade on the sword. So just work it uh, to make sure you get it in the recesses there. And just don't throw on too much, just a little bit so that it just gives it a little bit of shade in there. Once that null oil is dry we'll give it a little highlight with some uh, Vallejo Model Air Chrome. We just want to paint this towards the the bottom of the scales, just where the light's going to catch. And on the sword, just want to run it up the the side. And make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. You can look to run it up the middle as well. Just like that. So you can work it around if you want to pop some on some of the gold as well. So some of the more pronounced bits of gold. You can just use your brush and get the, the paint to catch there as well. I'll highlight the leather next and for that I'm going to use 
Doomball Brown. So there's quite a, a lot of leather. You've got this little bit of rope there as well. And I guess, as ever, you just want to follow the kind of raised areas. Taking care not to spoil anything you've already done. Not sure I'm much of a fan of Teclis's uh, boots there. There's plenty of leather on there, so like when you're working on the cord, just pop some some dashes through there. And again, it's just a case of working your way around the model, finding all the bits of leather. I'm popping this little highlight on with Doom Bull and we'll put some scrag on next, scrag brown on next, and that'll make it really pop. And once that Doom Bull is finished, we'll, we'll take some, like I said, some scrag brown. We're just looking really to get the really thin lines, which help accentuate the, the shape of the foot. And the boot and the same then for the cord I'm gonna dab it across where we've got the the raised level so work your way around for the rest of the leather that's that done um, the metallics are done so we've got the sword handle and the uh, the haft of the staff to do and of course the face and all the little gems and the runes the gems uh, are really easy, uh, so if you haven't already, just base coat them with um, some pallid witch flesh. And all we're going to do is we're going to paint some Magos purple over them. Let that dry, and that will give you the the same effect that you can see on the box art there. Uh, and what we're going to do for these runes as well, I'm just going to take that Magos purple and I'm going to work them into these runes. Now you can go back afterwards and tidy them up either by wiping your finger across them or just going back in with some pallid witch flesh uh, but you can get those done and we're on the home stretch. For the handles of the staff and the sword we're just going to use some Corax white just to cover up everything obviously be really careful when you get to those bits that you've already finished you don't want to be picking bits of Corax white out but just cover the whole thing nice and simple and uh, we'll come back and give it a little highlight next while we've got the uh, Corax white out as well we can go around and uh, cover up this trim that we've got so most of it will still be wraith bone from when we sprayed it. Uh, and then depending on how clean or messy you were with the uh, with the Canto Blue. You may have some Canto Blue on there as well. So just work around that trim as well. Get that back to white. Uh, and we're pretty much there. You can highlight the staff with some uh, white scar. Just pulling it down the main front. We don't need to worry about uh, any uh, wood grain or anything like that. Same with the, uh, with the sword handle. And there we go. Um, I think we probably try and catch the end of some of the runes with white scar as well. Nice and easy like that. Finish them off calm and then we'll come back. We've just got, uh, sorry, other things I just remembered need, need to be white. So we've got the seam here going down the uh, side of the suit. To go and correct that, we'll do the other side off cam and then we're ready for the face. Firstly, we want to base the face, hmm. poet, don't even know it, uh, with some Kislev flesh. And then we may need a couple of coats if we've spilt over with some of the blue. Let that dry and we'll come back and wash it next. And nice and easy shading the face with some Reichland Flesh Shade. 
just being careful around that uh, where the hood and the skin meet um, and just be careful not to let it pool too much I'll probably clean some of that off as well just a, a wet brush just move it around a bit more thin it out so our Reichland flesh shade is dry we just want to go back in with Kislev flesh and pick out those sharpest features the cheekbones and nose and the chin and then the last thing we want to do just take some flayed one flesh we're going to use this to just pick out those uh, most prominent areas probably need to go in and tidy up a little bit off cam and then uh, I'll do the eyes off cam but that's pretty much Teclis done so there we have it there's Teclis all done we're not going to do cellular today like I said at the start we'll do that for next time uh, no turntable because it's an absolute nightmare to get him to stand on there uh, at the moment so I really hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please leave a like and a comment down below I really appreciate any feedback that you do give. It does help me improve the channel for the future. If you'd like to support me, then you can do so using my link to Patreon in the description where you can get exclusive access to me. You can also get uh, monthly frequently asked questions, some exclusive content as well. You can also use the links in the description for my recommended equipment and for 20% off Goblin Gaming if you're in the UK or the EU. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.